Steve. Steve here, and today we're going to talk about that there's always room for improvement. A little bit of a rant, because uh, I'm going to address some comments from a particular person that I won't name, and show you the results of the modifications of the Smack Booster. Or I'm just going to call it the Booster now, because um, apparently some, this person doesn't like it being modified. Uh, anyway, hey, here's the deal. There's a guy, uh, he didn't like the way that I'm modifying the booster. He doesn't like my channel, doesn't like all my videos, and and he left some pretty uh, rude comments, and so I banned him. Um, but you know what? If you don't like my videos and you don't like the way that I do things, uh, simply don't waste your time. Just go somewhere else and watch somebody else's videos. It's that simple. As a matter of fact, if you go to... Uh, my profile page, rule number three of the house rules says, if you don't like the way that I'm doing stuff, you can pack sand. Uh, unless you replace my current salary, medical and dental benefits, and vacation and retirement plan. Uh, if you provide all that, I'll gladly do it your way. But until then, uh, I'm going to be like Burger King, and I'm going to do it my way. Okay? And we have to remember that no one is that smart. There's a proverb that says, a wise man surrounds himself with many advisors. Because the wise man understands that he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But if he has lots of advisors who are smart, he's probably going to be ahead of the game rather than the guy who thinks he's a know-it-all or he thinks he's the HHO police or whatever. Um, but anyway, that's something to think about. And this guy's logic, he says, uh, basically the smack booster is designed to work as best as it possibly can. Well, if it, let's look at that logic. If it was the best and there was no room for improvement, then why is the smack himself constantly testing and trying different things and, and making improvements? Matter of fact, he's got the he's got the smack booster and then he's got the Gen 2 booster, so even the smack realizes that there's room for improvement. Uh, so you need to do what the smack does, uh, get your head out of the out of the sand, and you need to think outside the box and test and try a lot of stuff. Uh, if you think you know it all, then you know what? Just go ahead and unsubscribe for me because uh, I don't want to be associated with people like you. But here's another comment that this guy said. You do not need to modify it. Well, if I'm running that booster within the parameters of 16 to 8 or 16 to 20 amps and to provide about, you know, anywhere from 1.2 to 1.5 liters per minute, then yeah, that's, that's what it's designed to do. But if I'm going to put like 30 to 35 amps through it, then don't you think something's going to have to change and be modified? Yeah, probably, you know, because you're going to be generating more amps, getting more gas, but you're going to have a heat problem, so you have to mitigate that. And so you're going to have to modify something. If you notice in the back, I've got some numbers, and those are some tests that I've done with the modified booster. And uh, we'll take a look and see what you think. So, But uh, for everybody else that's given helpful advice and tips and have sent me you know, PMs and correct me when I'm wrong and uh, to help me learn stuff, cool. I appreciate that. Keep that stuff coming. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's check out the, uh, the numbers over there. Talk about the modified Smack Booster and doing some tests, uh, uh, some output tests, MMW tests. And uh, so let's uh, take a look and see what we found out. Uh, there it is there. And, uh, but what I did is I had some heat problems, so I ended up uh, changing the metal straps with heavier gauge steel so I could uh, take the heat away from the terminals. And I, instead of switch plate covers, I ordered stainless steel, um, about the same size as switch plate covers, but I was able to put in two more uh, plates on each side, and so that way it's basically a positive, four neutral, negative type of system. And then, of course, shrink wrap it and stuff like that. Uh, but the more plates, we know that um, it'll take more to produce. Uh, so in other words, it's going to uh, dissipate the heat, and again, you're going to have that. You want to have around two volts per uh, between per plates. Uh, any more than that, I think it was like 1.45 to anywhere to 2 or something like that. Anything more than that uh, leads to generate heat, and that heats up your solution, and your solution gets heated up, which draws more amps. It draws more amps, which heats up your water and your solution more, which it gets into a vicious cycle. Um, 
so anyway, the, the extra neutral plates uh, help in with that heat problem. Uh, so anyway, I uh, hooked the modified smack booster. It's the one that I had with the terminals on the bottom of the canister instead of the top. And that way it's also with the JB Weld center with the bolt in the center of it uh, as a terminal. Uh, and then we put that in the canister uh, with the housing, PVC housing. So it should really help out a lot. Um, let's take a look at... I did a bunch of tests after I put it in the truck. Uh, let the truck run. And started out with, um, I was modifying the solution, so that's why there's a variation in amps. Um, but basically we start off with 11.41 uh, volts. And this was after it was running about, maybe about 30, 40 minutes. Uh, we had 30 amps. It's about 20.43 seconds for 500 milliliters. And the MMW is 4.29. And again... Uh, pretty much the same for the volts and the amps. And it was 11.41, maybe 11.42, but uh, it was mostly it was 4.1 with 30 amps. Uh, waited about five minutes uh, between each reading here. Um, this one was 21 seconds, uh, which was 4.17 mmW. Uh, the next one here we see was 4.21, uh, 4.23. 4.17 mmW, uh, 20 seconds, 20 and a half seconds is 4.28. And then down here we got, uh, let the truck run a little bit lo longer, charge up the battery, uh, added some more electrolyte solution, and the multimeter said 11.9 volts, 34 amps. Uh, I changed the, uh, the fuse in my system, so it's a 40 amp fuse now. Uh, Produced 500 milliliters in 18.75 with an MMW of 3.95. And again, uh, 34 amps as it heated up some more, 18.41, ended up with an MMW of 4.03. And 11.12 volts at 32.5 amps, uh, added some solution to cool it down a little bit, uh, distilled water. 18.37 with an MMW of 4.52 and then the voltage started to go down 11.11 uh, again 32 and a half amps 18.53 seconds for 500 milliliters for an MMW of 4.48 and so there we have it the modified smack booster uh, haven't done the road test yet but uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that and try to run this cell a little bit hotter and with more amps, definitely going to try to keep it down below 40 amps. But that's the, uh, the test from the vehicle running, uh, hooked up to the battery. And uh, just thought you wanted to take a look at that. Okay, so those are the results of the test of the modified booster that uh, uh, looks like I'm probably going to run about around 30 amps, 30 to 34 amps through it. And uh, as you can see, the numbers uh, numbers don't lie. It's some pretty good MMW and some output, so uh, that should help uh, in the vehicle. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and the reason we need to kind of get out of the mindset of, oh, well, it's always said, I read on the Internet and so-and-so said, so I believe this. We need to test these things out instead of taking them as gospel truth. Um, for example, um, Higher Powered H2O did a video where he did a video testing and he showed uh, his oxygen sensor and he put in oxygen, uh, a mad amount of oxygen just before the sensor, put it in just before the sensor and it didn't change the reading or the voltage of that O2 sensor. And it was, a, it was a buttload of oxygen. So everybody that's been saying, and me included, saying that, hey, well, you need to, you know, oxygen from the hydrogen generator is going to mess with your O2 sensor. In that instance, it didn't. And it was just straight up oxygen. So we need to step back and test some things out and see, see if they actually are true or not. And if it's only true for a specific make or model or, or whatever the case is, we need to do more testing uh, like higher powered H2O does and to share those results and uh, to try different things to see if we can get higher uh, efficiency ratings and output and whatever else. 
uh, to, to really get this technology out there. So anyway, but that's it. And uh, hey, everybody that's sending me tips and advice and schooling me and helping me out, I appreciate that. And again, my hat's off to the smack for the system that he built. And uh, I'm just looking forward to his videos that he's going to be putting out. So that's about it. So take care. Peace. And we'll catch you later.